you know, we get a lot of questions about uh, supplementation. I mean, we get asked questions all the time about muscle building and fat loss mm -hmm. supplements and what's better for this or how much should I take of that? And the truth is, before I would even explore, you know, ergogenic supplements like that, I would first look into balancing out what my body needs, no matter what my goal is, whether your goal is to build muscle or burn body fat or just longevity and health, any, any one of those. Before I go take a performance type of supplement, I would much rather go get tested and find out if, where do I have potential deficiencies and supplement what my body needs. And I think you'll get, I think you can make the case that you'll get as, as much or more benefits by balancing out what your body needs versus slapping on some. You perform way better when you're healthier. Right. And that's your baseline. So if you can bring up your baseline to a healthier homeostasis, you know, now you add on performance on top of a healthier baseline. It's like well, the potential is even more uh, great. Boom. It's mind pump time. Here's the giveaway for today's episode. Maps Aesthetic. This is the bodybuilder inspired maps program and you can get it for free, but you got to do this. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this amazing channel and turn on notifications. If you do all of those things and we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section and say, hey, guess what? You win this program for free. Also, we got a sale going on right now, all month long. The Shredded Summer Maps Bundle is on sale, 50% off. That bundle has Maps Aesthetic, Maps Hit, Maps Prime, and the Intuitive Nutrition Guide. Also, if you just want one Maps program, Maps Hit is on sale, 50% off. High intensity interval training done right. You don't lose muscle, you burn body fat. In fact, you may build some muscle because we wrote it and we know what we're doing. That program again, 50% off. So if you're interested, go to mapsfitnessproducts.com and then use the code June50 for the 50% off discount. All right, here comes the show. All right, look, check this out. If you're not getting results, if you feel crappy, you're trying to wonder what's going on, stop guessing, test. Test yourself, blood tests, get tests with your hair. Find out what the root cause is so you can solve some of these issues. Objective data. Yes. You know, uh, I see so many people, I, I do this, I'm also guilty of this as well, where I'm like, oh, I think it's this, I think it's that. Mm -hmm. And you throw different things at yourself and never really figure out what the hell is going on. When all you really need to do is a simple, you know, you could get, for example, we did the hair test with uh, Dr. Cabral and he saw that. We had some heavy metals that were a little high. I know Adam's magnesium was a little low. My uh, copper intake was a little low. And it's like, we, I know exactly what to do now yeah. to make myself feel better. It's right here. It's all it's objective. It's so empowering. I mean, it's, it's, you're educating yourself about how, you know, the, the root of a lot of uh, symptoms that you may be experiencing, you can get to that point if you do the work of like actually you know taking those steps to take those tests and sift through all that data yeah, yeah. also on the hor hormonal level too oh, totally. right so i remember when i first met katrina i thought this was really interesting that her um her mom had made all their kids before they turned 30 years old uh get all their hormones tested oh is that mm. a baseline yes mm -hmm. and i thought that was really uh, and at that time like it didn't make that much sense to me i'm like why you guys are all healthy or fine like and you would think i would know better as a trainer and stuff um, but now my, all my experience with HRT and obviously getting tested on a very regular basis. Now I get it. Right. And I remember when I first talked to the first hormone therapist and they were telling me like, you know, everyone's so, so different, right? There's a huge range when it comes to what's considered healthier or uh, unhealthy. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, if you're used to running in the, you know, if you're in, in your whole twenties growing up and maybe even early thirties, you were in the higher range of what would would be the healthy range right and that gets cut in half but you're still considered in the you know healthy range or in not, a range yeah in a range mm -hmm. you're not un, you're not considered unhealthy uh, but you might be getting a lot of the other symptoms from like low testosterone for example and it may be because your testosterone levels have been cut in half and for you you can feel the difference of what cut in half feels like but a, a regular general practitioner will not see that as a red flag. They'll do like a normal blood work on you. They won't see that as like, you know, dangerously low and they'll just disregard it and move on. So getting your hormones tested when you're young and you feel healthy, which is not what you think to do because you're young and healthy. So you don't mm -hmm. think to do this. There's nothing wrong with me. Yeah. I think it's really smart. Uh, I thought that was really good advice that she had her kids do that. So they have a baseline as they age, they get into 35, 40 and 50 now, some of her kids. 
you know, can now go back and be like, this is what, when I felt most optimal and this is what is normal for me and then have somebody help balance it oh, out. I mean, completely. Mm -hmm. I, you know, um, it, this even goes to like tracking your food or yeah. uh, doing an elimination diet. Like you're trying to figure out and guess why your digestion is off or you're trying to figure out why am I not losing body fat, you know, and, and you're kind of guessing along the way, like having objective data, because when we guess we're often wrong, we have a lot of our own subjective opinions and, you know, you know, you could feel, you, you could feel like crap because you have this particular nutrient deficiency and this nutrient deficiency or one or the other, and you think it's one, but it's not, or you could feel like crap because you have too much of a nutrient. Like, Vitamin D is a good example, right? Vitamin D is uh, often talked about as being something that people are often low in. And let's say you have too much vitamin D and you're kind of feeling crappy and you think, oh, most people are low in vitamin D. I need to supplement with it. You could be causing a dangerous situation. You know, people did this with calcium. I remember in the 90s, um, you know, when it was, it was like this big push to take calcium because of osteoporosis. Uh, by the way, that doesn't help. Unless you have a calcium deficiency, it's not going to build any stronger bones, especially if you're not telling your body to build stronger bones. But nonetheless, lots of people, in particular women, supplemented with calcium. As a result, uh, they had calcium levels that too, were too high, many mm. people, and you got calcium deposits that caused heart issues. Mm -hmm. So it actually made their health much worse. And the cool thing is you could get all this testing. For example, um, if you get the hormone a hormone panel done, it's relatively inexpensive to do a hormone panel, have a doctor who's an expert at this look at it, and you, what you do is you connect it to your energy, your symptoms, your lifestyle, and then you can see, okay, maybe things aren't at a range, but let's see what I can change with my lifestyle and what moves up and what moves down. Or maybe, and this is really cool, you get the reading back and you go, oh my God, like that doesn't look right. Yeah. If I just solve that issue right there, I'm going to feel so much better. Same thing with blood tests and the hair tests, like the ones that we did. Um, you know, Stool samples, for example, it could tell you quite a bit about your about your your gut, like all of these objective tests can tell you, and I can't tell you everything, but when you combine those with your subjective experience, you have a roadmap. Otherwise, it's a lot of, you know, kind of guessing and trial and error. Not only that, I'm glad you went this way with a fitness tip because, you know, we get a lot of questions about uh, supplementation, right? I think I just sent you guys one that a bunch of people have sent me over, Sal, on the HMB. Yeah. We brought that up. And of course, we talk about creatine. We get people asking about fat loss stuff. There's the ectosterone and what are the other ones that people, I mean, we get asked questions all the time about muscle building and fat loss mm -hmm. supplements and what's better for this or how much should I take of that? And the truth is before I would even explore, you know, ergogenic supplements like that, I would first look into balancing out what my body needs, no matter what my goal is, whether your goal is to build muscle or burn body fat or just longevity and health, any, any one of those, before I go take a performance type of supplement, I would much rather go get tested and find out if, where do I have potential deficiencies and supplement what my body needs. And I think you'll get, I, I think you can make the case that you'll get as, as much or more benefits by balancing out what your body needs versus slapping on you some. You perform way better when you're healthier. Right. And that's your baseline. So if you can bring up your baseline to a healthier homeostasis, you know, now you add on performance on top of a healthier baseline. It's like well, the potential is even more uh, great. Yeah. Let me give you guys another example, right? Um, if certain B vitamins are too low, one of the symptoms could be neurological effects, neuropathy, like pain in your extremities, tingling. You could get like these kind of strange neur neur neurological effects. The side effect of B vitamins being way too high, let's say you mega dose, you, this wouldn't happen with eating food, but let's say you, you take B vitamins a lot and you take too many of them. Side effects of that, neuropathy, neurological issues. I had a family member this happened to. She was experiencing these strange kind of neurological issues, couldn't figure out what was going on, was going online researching and she's like, I need more B vitamins. So she upped her B vitamin intake and kept doing this for like a year where she was freaking out, thought maybe she had MS or whatever. Anyway. Went, finally got tested and they're like, you need to stop supplementing with these B vitamins. You're mega dosing and that's probably what's causing the issue. She stopped supplementing. All went away. And it went away. <laughs> but but <laughs> she suffered for a year doing the exact opposite of what she thought she was supposed to do. So, and, and this testing isn't that bad. I mean, for hundreds of dollars, you could get these objective measures and then have targeted, like very targeted advice that could make a profound impact on how you feel. Like, like Adam, we found out your magnesium was low. Yeah. Okay. 
makes a big difference for you supplement. Oh, that's, that, that's okay. I would make the case that supplementing with magnesium is helping me build more muscle than any creatine or performance supplement I've ever taken in my life mm. because of what, how much of an impact it's made on my sleep. Because be, when I take that supplement, uh, the, the, my night's rest is night and day difference versus when I wasn't taking any magnesium whatsoever. And we, we've all been talking about how important sleep is forever on this podcast for performance in the gym and recovery. Mm -hmm. So if, if that's being disrupted and I'm getting by, I still built muscle even when I wasn't taking it. Sure, I was fine. But now when I look at like how much better I feel when, I, when I'm taking that, that's what I mean by I think supplementing for what you need. I think has so much more of a compounding effect on whatever your pursuit is than taking this specific supplement that you heard is supposed to help you burn more body fat or it's supposed to help you build muscle. Yeah, another example would be, um, let's say you feel kind of weak and shaky. Um, you have like kind of poor concentration and you read, oh, ashwagandha. That's a great adaptogen that helps people feel better. It helps them with stress, it improves strength, boost testosterone, all true. So let me start supplementing with it. But you don't know, because you didn't do any testing, that the reason why you were feeling crappy was because you were producing too much thyroid. You had hyperthyroidism. You know what you don't want to take when you're hyperthyroid? Ashwagandha. Mm. It could potentially make it worse. So these are just examples uh, you know, that we're giving that it's really important that you go and you get that testing. And then you can really, because look, here, when it comes to workouts, I'm going to tell you something right now. I can design a good general workout. We obviously have. We've got MAPS programs. Lots of people like them. We've made so many of them so that there's a, a, a variety of programs that hopefully can suit most people. But does that even come close to a program that we could create when we meet an individual, train them, assess right. them, see how their body responds, change the workout on the fly based on how they feel? Take inventory of all their variables. Like, yes. Yeah, and, and on the training end of it, too, we're talking about testing and being objective. Like, that's another reason why we were so passionate about creating like a test uh, to go through in a protocol to see how much form and function and, and um, abilities uh, mm. you have going into this process. Uh, or, uh, you know, what you've done so far and like how we can objectively kind of measure, um, you know, where you are in terms of your range of motion, your control um, and and stability. And so like for, that's always been an important factor for me and was always something I would bring up uh, within anybody's training program after a month, after three months, after something that's we got to come back and take a look and, and, and objectively um, um, see where we've had success where maybe we need to really like focus in on and, and improve. And so, you know, you just have to look at that as like, we're not just winging it here. Uh, we always have to take time to come back and reassess. Yeah, yeah, completely. And, and, you know, I know that the, the holdback for a lot of people on this is a, where do I go? My general practitioner, I bring this up and they're like, now nah, you're fine. B cost C, uh, going to the lab, doing the testing, I get all that. So, and we've talked about this before, but what we did is we want, what we try to do is we try to lower the barrier so much so that people have more and more people have access to this kind of stuff. So what we have is we created two free forums on Facebook. One is for holistic health. It's called MP holistic health, and it's run by Dr. Steven Cabral's team. So there's some of the best uh, in the industry when it comes to functional health. And literally they'll go on there and do live Q and A's. They'll present different topics. You can ask questions and it's totally free. So, and this kind of access is like, you can't get anywhere. Sometimes you, you can't get this and pay for it. And then we have a forum called mind pump, uh, hormones. That's all about hormones, hormone replacement therapy and testing for that also free. So, uh, if you're like, oh man, I don't know who would I go to? What do I do? Who do I ask questions? I don't know if I'm Go there. It's totally free. And then hopefully that'll direct you in the right, right way or answer questions for you that you normally wouldn't Such get answered. Such a valuable resource. I mean, as a yeah. trainer, you get into a position where you, you're doing everything right. Like the the workouts are, are going well, the nutrition's going well, but there's just something still that you haven't been able to unlock in terms of potential. And a lot of times, you know, it's in the hormone direction. It's in, you know, some of the deficiencies that you haven't really discovered within um, the testing part of it that mm -hmm. you need to do. Well, this was inspired last year when, you know, every year we try and, and, and get outside of the business, right? Or get away from the, the, the studio and work outside the business and really talk about 
big picture stuff. It's something we always try and do every year is to evaluate um, our community and what we're doing and ways that we can add more value to to the business. Uh, of course, it's important that we're thinking about scaling. And yes, it's important that we think about making money and other aspects that are important to growing a business, but also how can we already give back more to the community that we already have? And that was this. I mean, partnering up with Dr. Cabral and partnering up with Regenerative, to me, I think covers some of the, the the most broad questions that we get around those topics. And instead of us always trying to answer is seeking out, we always talk about this on the podcast about being mavens, right? We pride ourselves and we try and teach other coaches to be like this. Like, yeah, you know, we have enough experience and knowledge to probably answer a lot of these questions, but why? When we could seek out some of the best in the space that can be there for you and then partner up with them to be able to provide a service that you guys don't even have to pay for. Well, so. I, look, this is what I did as a trainer. So one of the most valuable things I did as a trainer that, uh, and it, I didn't even go to it from a build my business perspective. I just had clients that were with me for years and years and years. And I, I wanted to be better at uh, being their coach, right? Being, being Being their fitness coach. And so what I did is I developed these relationships with experts in health and wellness in areas that I did not have expertise. And so I had, I did have a hormone doctor that I, a local one that I would refer to. Mm -hmm. I did have functional medicine practitioners I referred to. I also had movement specialists, like a physical therapist, had a chiropractor, acupuncture, all that stuff. So when my clients would come to me and there was a, an issue that we couldn't solve through exercise and nutrition through my expertise, and it was stubborn. Like, man, you know, your shoulder pain, yeah, it got better, but it's still there. Your movement looks good. It's hard for me to figure this out. You know what? I have a friend who's a movement specialist. They know more than I do about this kind of stuff. Let me send you them. Or, you know, your energy still is low. You're getting good sleep. We cut out caffeine. We're, you know, we're eating right. You're exercising. And, you know, let's get your hormone panel done. Let's see what's going on there. Maybe your hormones are a little off or whatever. And I would send them to these people. And the value was massive because we would figure it out. And then they come to me be like, oh my God, Sal, I'm so happy you sent me to so-and-so. It looks like my testosterone is low, or it looks like my, you know, my, my growth hormone might be off, or I have this food intolerance that I, I didn't identify before. And so it made a huge difference. So basic, these forums are basically an extension of that. I mean, we can't personal train everybody who listens to the show, obviously, yeah. but it's an extension of kind of what we did. I know you guys did the same thing. You guys had your same, connections yeah. as well. Well, and, and along those lines, okay, you've heard me on the podcast before, right? For giving shit to trainers about not having Prime and Prime Pro. I am going to fucking shame it's you right now. Two yeah. and a half years you've been fucking listening to us talk and you haven't bought Maps Performance or Maps Prime Pro or Maps Prime yet and you're a trainer. Shame on you. Shame on you. Seriously. This is the next thing you're going to hear me give you shit for. If you are a personal trainer and you call into this podcast or you ask me a question in my DM you go or in the forum. Though. You gotta go easier. Adam. And you <laughs> shame them. Shame and you, them. And, 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 and if you are not, <laughs> do hey, it. this is free. Okay, so <laughs> I definitely don't feel guilty about shaming your ass for this. I, it's I, tough love. I, I got Adam's a, I got voice a, cracks, he's serious. I got it. a little shit last time for the 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 Prime Pro thing with well, the can girl. Can we talk that, about that? Didn't uh, we get a message back? We did, actually. Yeah. I, sent it, I sent it to Doug. I'll have Doug read it after this because she did respond after I responded to the people that were saying things to me about giving her a like hard you were time. Too mean or whatever. Yeah, about being mean, about, <laughs> that, oh, you don't know her situation, blah, 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 all the stuff like that. Well, well, we'll read what the fuck she had to say after that. So we'll address that in a second. <laughs> oh, no. But this is, my this is my next thing that you're going to hear me. So if you're a trainer listening to this podcast <laughs> and you are not in those uh, free forums, okay, did not cost you anything, the amount of information and knowledge that you're going to get by just being a part of those forums is going to make you 10 times better coach. I would kill to have access to those two forums and Prime and Prime Pro as a coach and trainer. That will separate you from so many coaches by having access. Yeah. And he I will, understand. He will find you in your home. I, and I understand the Prime and Prime Pro because I know it costs money. Everybody wants everything to be free. Well, these forums are free, okay? It's coming out of our pocket to have this partnership and to work this out. So go in there. If you're a trainer and you ask a question and you're not in there, I'm going to be mad so at you. That, so that episode, so, this is, so for people to know, a young lady calls in. She's a college student, trainer, and asking us questions. We're helping because we do those live. She's been listening for years. Too. Listening for years. Yeah. And Adam's like, so, oh, you know, do you have, you know, Maps Prime or Prime Pro? And she's like, no, I don't. And then he like just goes off on her because he's like, what are you doing? That's what you need. If you're training people, you've been listening for years. Anyway, we got like a bunch of messages from people who are like, oh, Adam. Oh, we've got mean. emails. We got e uh, the customer service team called me like, what did you say on this podcast? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Get people angry. Uh, but she yeah. messaged us back 
And she said she was appreciative. She said, you roasted me, but I needed it. Thank you so much. Well, read it. What does it say, Doug? Can you read it from there? It says, yeah, Adam, I'm the trainer you roasted on the podcast for not having any MAPS programs. On summer break, away from work now, so I've been diving into MAPS Prime Pro and performance, and I'm loving the content and can't wait to use them on some of my clients when I get back. Was catching up on the podcast and just listened to a guy say he bought the programs because he was scared. You'd give him heat for not having any, which was actually hilarious. Glad I was able to take one for the team so other PTs won't make the same mistake. Thanks so much for the programs and the tough love builds character. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> love her even yeah. more. No. I did. Right. I went back and forth with her afterwards. So All the rest uh, is fake news. Appreciate yeah. you being a good sport and everything <laughs> like that. Because, it does, okay, it does come from a place of love. I know, of course, the, the sensitive people... Because it was like it turned. Of course, it turned into a, you don't know her situation and money and this and that. I was like, it wasn't. Well, we a, gave him to her for free. At the end. I, I know that was yeah. the other thing too. It was like, come on, it wasn't. It's not about the money for me. It's the the point I'm trying to make. It's, it's a very small investment for coaches and trainers, and I can't stress enough how valuable it is. Listen, and I'm not saying that just because it puts freaking ten dollars in got, my pocket. You have two options with people. You have people with a filter, and they'll tell you what they think you want to hear. Yeah. And then you have Adam. He has zero filter. <laughs> That's what we love about however, Adam. However, just gives it to you straight. However, you know what he's thinking. You never guess him. Like, is he real? Yeah. Is he fake yeah. right now? Yeah. Yeah. You know he you know exactly. There's no, there's no reading between here the comes. lines. Here comes. Yeah. <laughs> no softness here. Yeah. I felt. But I, I mean, do, do you guys agree or disagree? Uh, Prime, Prime Pro, and now maybe these forums. Oh, can I tell you? Dude? Maybe the four most oh valuable oh, things easily. that a coach. If trained. I was a trainer, if I had these resources when I was a trainer dude, back in the day, are you kidding me? Like I said, we I mean, didn't have any of this stuff. I was always trying to troubleshoot, and then what you what you would do is go ask your other trainer buddies if they knew somebody or anybody. Like, it, it, just trying to find the right person like took forever. Yeah, and, and when when I finally find them, I wanted to keep them to myself. Yeah, because it was like, oh, dude, no, I this found was a gold it was mine. it was I didn't get I didn't really do this effectively until it took me ten years into my career. Yeah, because I would meet one you know, functional medicine practitioner. And then, you know, I'd send them a person and then I'd talk to them back and I'm like, oh, they don't really want to work with me or this isn't really, they're not really working really well or not jiving. It, it was like trial and error. It took me a long, it took me 10 freaking years to develop my network. Oh, yeah. And then when I did, it was of course very valuable, but I wish I had a resource like this as a trainer. Well, you remember as a trainer too, you get these, right? I mean, we just had a call recently of something that was a PCOS, right? That we yeah, just yeah, came yeah. In, that I'd never trained anybody with that. Here I'm 20 years deep into this space and yeah. I'd never trained anybody with that. Ironically, right after that question had came in, Sal answered it because he had experience in that. Ironically, Doug pulls up the MP uh, Holistic Health Forum and one of the first questions that are in there asking yeah. Dr. Cabral is about PCOS. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I mean, I'm still using Cabral and regenerative to reference because yeah. I don't have all the answers for that stuff. So they're my well, go-to. When well, I I, there was a point. So when we first did the Hormone Forum, um, you know, lots of people went in and were asking questions. I thought, and I was so wrong on this, and I'm so glad that I was corrected. I thought that if you went on hormone replacement therapy, so if you're a man, for example, I'll use an example. If you're a man, you get tested, testosterone's low, and you have symptoms of low testosterone, um, and you're, you're trying to fix it through lifestyle, it's really not working for you, so you go on testosterone, that if you go on testosterone, that's it, you have to stay on forever. Mm -hmm. Because now what you've done is you've ruined your body's ability even further to produce testosterone. False. That's not true. I was corrected by the doctors then. They said, no, no, no. You can go off. You'll just go back to what you were before. But it's not going to make you worse. It's not like you're all of a sudden now you make it, you do it once and now you're on for the rest of your life. And then, you know, Dr. Todd explained to me the whole process. I was like, oh, okay, that makes perfect sense. Which, by the way, this is different than when you hear bodybuilders say, I have to go on TRT because of the anabolic steroids that I've used. The doses are very different. So some people are like, no, that's not true. I know a guy who took steroids and then in his 20s and that. No, no, no. They, they weren't using replacement levels. They were using- Well, ridiculous. the other thing I didn't know either that I learned with them too was uh, that I could still get pregnant taking- Because when I when we you were- pregnant? Huh? Well, no. you, you know what I mean. Well, it is 2020. We, yeah. Yes. We isn't- Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's not what I meant by that. You <laughs> made your wife. You made true that. Yes. Wow. We, I mean, you say we, we get pregnant, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Right. So it's a team effort, right? So uh, I thought you because of, part. I thought because of all my steroid <laughs> use in competing, and then uh, I came off of it because I was trying to get pregnant, and I, they were the ones that told me like, "Oh no, you can, we can put you on replacement, and still, you can still absolutely, we'll just, we'll just run HCG with it." 
I didn't know you do that. So my, my, my knowledge of ACG usage, HCG usage was post cycle. Yeah. So I would use HCG after a post cycle of, of running, running anabolics to get, try and get my natural hormone levels back up. But you, I didn't know you can run it in conjunction with yeah. a, with an actual yep. therapy dose. You know that they and have, so, I mean, and I just had, I told, you know, my story recently of the, you know, my, my sperm came back and. I have super sperm, in case you're wondering. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. those are good, yeah. huh? Yeah, it was I, don't a good I don't know count. if we high-five right now. Is that what we do? <laughs> I don't want to touch those hands. Hey, <laughs> I don't hey, want to touch hey, we made a, yeah. we make a cake yeah. for you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spider-Man. No. Yeah. Yeah. Katrina was actually the one who told, <laughs> Katrina was the one that told me the news, and, and she's like, are you excited Wait, about do it? they give you like a, like, because like, I know you're competitive. Is there like a scale? Like, where do I rake? <laughs> or is it just like you're good? You know what I mean? I'll ask. I want to know. I think it's, I think it's, I'm just, the just. I mean, they. I think it's like, um like volume, speed of your guys, like all those things. Yeah, number. Yeah, like yeah. I checked the motility. Box. Or I checked all the boxes, so I was good. Oh, good. Now I don't. What I don't know is like if they. I'll ask because I am now. How do sure. I compare? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you have a yeah. Do you have a Justin Andrews They're in like, your file? There? You know, yeah. for a for a sixty five year old man, you would be in the upper ten percent. No, no, <laughs> what? No. no, no, I don't know. Uh, but I mean, I was good, right? So we're, now we have. And you, now, did you guys know this with HCG? So here's some more stuff that I learned about it. So when you go on. When a man goes on uh, testosterone replacement therapy, they go on testosterone and their body then, of course, because it senses testosterone, then stops producing its own and you've replaced your testosterone right. and you bring it in this optimal level. However, uh, many hormone therapy facilities won't, conjunct, won't put you on HCG at the same time because they think, what's the difference? I know that our place often re recommends that you also take HCG because- because your body stops making testosterone, it also makes all, stops making all these other upstream hormones like uh, DHEA. It could stop producing that. It could stop making pre pregnenolone. Taking HCG makes everything more balanced along with your testosterone. So when you talk to men who go mm. on testosterone replacement therapy and take a little HCG, they feel so much better. And it's because of that. Yeah, it's interesting, so, right? It's super interesting. And I hope I'm explaining it right. I'm, I'm, if I'm not, uh, go uh, to the forum. The, yeah, the forum. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah. The, That's the why we cross check me. us there. For but sure. yeah, really interesting, right? Yeah, no, yeah. it was super. Because I, okay, I remember hearing about this way back when on like the body, but back the, that's where my, my steroid knowledge came from. Uh, the steroid Bible and then bodybuilding. Oh, form. Dan Duquesne's book. Yeah, right, yeah, yeah, and bodybuilding form, which by the way is phenomenal. I mean, it, I mean, it, it got me to where I was at, but I. At back then, uh, there were people that were experimenting with HCG at the same time. And actually, I remember reading in the forums, and a lot of those people got criticized. Oh, that's stupid! Waste of time. Waste of yeah, we were saying it was a waste of money, waste of time, uh -huh. and a lot of the a lot the of the limits that, of bro science. Yeah. yeah, I mean that is it's a great example of that like I, it, and I and I totally just I just discounted it as like oh that must be bullshit because because yeah. so many people would call out someone that said they were using HCG with their stack. They would say that's stupid. It's Dude, pointless. You got to be careful with that, with that bro science advice, especially in that because they're kamikaze with some of the stuff. Like we brought this up yesterday. Oh, I don't yeah, think I've ever talked the about this on the show. Thing. There's a, there's a compound and, and I'm almost like, should I bring this up? Cause I really don't want an idiot to hear what I'm up to say and be yeah, like, that's be responsible cool. for that thought. This is literally the stupidest thing you could possibly do. But anyway, there's a chemical <laughs> that is, I believe it's used in the process of making dynamite. Okay. So it's a chemical called DNP. I don't know what the full name of it is. It's dynamite. And it's got this crazy um, thermogenic effect to where you take it, it ramps up your body temperature so much that you burn body fat. And apparently, like a pound a day. Like Dude. a pound of body fat. Okay. Now here's the deal. That's scary. Here's the deal. It will kill you too. It's actually one of the most dangerous things. Well, so take. okay, I, I actually, I, it's so like it incinerates you from the inside. Bro, it yes! is, it's it's actually still very popular in the bodybuilding world. That's crazy. And I have fr I have friends that have taken it. Are you serious? Yeah, well, I have friends that have taken everything. Right, that have like they're just a, a chem walking chemistry set. They've yeah. a, they've tried everything out before, and they've all confirmed that that was the scariest shit they ever messed with. They said it feels scary. Yeah, because apparently you take yeah, it and you get fuck. and you lay in bed and you sweat your ass off yes. and you and you hallucinate. It feels like you're like like it and your you can feel your heart racing like crazy all day long. I mean, I've told I think I shared a long time ago on the podcast Yikes. when the first time that I I tried clombuterol, and that which was, is like a, like a like a baby Flintstone compared. And I and I took a little bit too much. That I, like I read the the milligram thing on there on the because <laughs> you, like, you didn't carry the one or something like that. Yeah, oh, no. yeah, yeah. So and I it was it was scary. I mean the yeah, whole the, the whole day I felt my my heart was racing all all and it, I took it early in the morning and I mean at even later that night well, I was well, still it DN took like a whole like 
24, 48 hours to actually feel it kind of wear off. So I read more about DMP. Apparently, it's so powerful that you'll burn muscle too. You'll burn shit off if you're not careful. So this is what happened with my experience Dang. with clombuterol. I leaned out so hard, so fast. I mean, I just dropped a ton of weight. I lost muscle too. Like a like wild. a significant amount because That's it was wild. just I mean it was it was it it sped my metabolism. Now mind you, it was also the first time I'd ever cut really hard for a show. I you also just threw everything about the kitchen. Yeah, yourself. I did all those things, and it just I mean it complete. I mean I was shredded, but I also lost a lot of muscle, and it was definitely scary. in the last time I that's so that. wild. You know what's funny is when you look at the lifespan, not bodybuilders post. 1970s because then they started getting crazier post 1980s but if you look at bodybuilders of the 60s and 70s they all live till they're like mid 70s mid 80s decent health until they finally pass away and what it what it is because i look at that and i go well i know they abuse steroids they didn't not like they do they did in the in the 80s definitely not in the 90s and and, and it was just mainly testosterone right well they took uh diana ball and deca uh, and all this other stuff but, low but what it was is because they also worked out and they they stayed lean so it's like they did all this stuff that was bad but then they also did all these other things so they have like a their lifespan matches the average american yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's crazy, I really yeah. feel like you know it, it, it like again like everything else like the pendulum swings right. I think that will come back because I think the 90s to early 2000s were really pushing the limits. Crazy. And I mean even and I'm guilty of that being a young 20 year old not knowing any better doing stuff and something that I have learned during my my journey of using anabolics is uh less is more sometimes. Mm. Not most of the time. Like it takes very little amount for me to feel really good and see great results from it and not have side effects. It's when you start pushing those boundaries that the side effects get worse. I didn't see as much results from it. I think, and I remember seeing that in the community when I was when I was competing. Just everybody was trying that a, th a thing. This is to burn. This is to build. This is to recover. This is, and you're just stacking all add, this stuff. Add, add. Yeah, just adding, adding, adding. It's like no man, it's crazy. Just a little bit of this, and that's enough. That's enough to keep those hormones level is optimal for building muscle and you'll be blown away what you'll that's do wild. That. so that's i think wild. i think the education around it is 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 getting better well it's, it's an like, it's an extreme sport so mm -hmm. i wouldn't expect i wouldn't expect um them to go the health route anyway well I speaking mean, of recovery so you guys know that like juve partnered up with um 49ers yeah and, and all that and uh, they have this incredible like recovery um, gym and everything for them with all the panels and stuff. I guess they partnered up too with Under Armour. And so Juve all did? of their Under Armour athletes and everything are, you know, set up with Juves and wow. have been raving about That's a huge their how success. Are they, now, how are they using the red light therapy? Like post uh, training and practice? Post training, yeah, mainly for recovery purposes, like on top of everything else uh, with the Nor Normatec like boots and you know, all that stuff. So, you know, what's interesting about, re about recovery tools is oftentimes recovery tools, they help with recovery because they blunt inflammation, um, which can help with recovery, but also can potentially blunt the muscle building recover uh, the, the, the repair process. Cause inflammation is a good signal. Yeah. Red light therapy is different. Red light therapy, uh, modulates inflammation. So it doesn't block it, but it will modulate it so that it's good. But what it does is it goes to the mitochondria of cells and it makes them operate faster and more efficiently and better, meaning you produce more ATP, which is muscle energy. That's what you get from when you supplement creatine, meaning you're going to get better protein synthesis. So it's, it helps with recovery, but it doesn't blunt the muscle building signal. In fact, if anything, it raises it a little bit. So it's this really interesting muscle building recovery tool. Now, the problem in the past with red light therapy is uh, they were it was out of reach for the consumer. Commercial models, you had you know, cost you you know fifteen thousand dollars. You go to a salon and they would do it for your face or something like that. <clears throat> you have to use it regularly. So really, the only way to make it efficacious is to have one in your home. But then they were out of range, and then now enter Juve. Obviously, you can get a panel for way less than that. Use it daily, and then you get you know good results. How do you guys want me to uh, put it at the Utah house? So I, I've got calls actually this week mm. to do that. And one of the things, so originally this was my idea, and I've actually just funny you're bringing this up right now because. Last night, I was like, you know what? Maybe I'll do it this way instead. So originally, it, it was going to be set up like this. So we, we're going to have the PRX in the garage. Then we're going to have the cold plunge. And then we're going to have uh, the sauna inside there. All, right? all in there. All in the mm -hmm. garage. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and then I was going to, you know, mount like three panels or like they were, we, I was talking with a uh, camera. kind of boxed in. Yeah. And like we're front and back yeah. or something like that. We, we're talking about building something so you can mount it like that. So that's that was the original idea. Then I thought, you know, it would be kind of cool 
is because it's a three it's a three bedroom is if each bedroom just had its own panel that was mounted on the wall with like a little you know digital thing that tells you how to use it. I like that better. Yeah. Well, I mean, so I, in the bedrooms or in the in the in the garage with all the other stuff. What do you think? You know what? Um, boy, what do you think, tough. Doug? I, uh, well, here's the thing. I like to use my panel naked. So do okay. I. That's why I was so the bedroom. So I think thing. the bathroom or something like that. Would be That's why I thought the bedroom. Yeah. Right, you're, mm -hmm. you're, if we put them in everyone's individual yeah. bedroom, then I, my thought was, oh, because originally I thought, oh, keep all this like biohack stuff in the same area. You guys don't lift weights naked? <laughs> I haven't. I mean, um, yes. I'm always mean. worried about dropping something. <laughs> have, you, have you ever tried to do that? <laughs> I did huh? do that once. You, you lived at home. I have never lifted pull ups naked. No, you it have was not. liberating. <laughs> did you really? I did. I kind of want to do it now. Rep or two. Now that you say it, I kind of want to do it. No, I'm not going to work out naked. That feels like dangerous. You know what I mean? Don't you feel like you hit something? Because <laughs> <laughs> your your bikini underwear and your Vioris yeah. are protecting your stuff. Or I mean, what? kind yeah, of what? like you're just smashing things on yeah, you. Yeah, you put a dumbbell in the bag. Oh, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> No, dude. Yeah. No, that, I, like you so worried to drag on the floor or something or what? <laughs> guy, I can't he's, squat he's, as low. Yeah, he's, 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 <laughs> no. I can't. I, I mean, can't it break is pretty vulnerable. Break degrees right? anymore. Yeah, you're stupid. squatting down. Like, stupid, if somebody dude. walks in, that's hey, the most vulnerable. That, I, okay, exactly. Yeah. Like you're squatting naked. Like you know. Well, I mean? no, you do it when you're all alone. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you lived at home by yourself time, so I, I would have thought of all of us, you would be the most likely to. No, do. I didn't just, know you. Where are you doing? Well, you know, out the forest. I was. No, I was in the forest. Uh, weird. <laughs> you, know, it's like a you, know, you know, you go naked in the forest all the time. I'm not a hippie, dude. I'll tell you that right now. But I have definite tendencies of wood woodsman guy. Right? But, uh, he carries his axe yeah. out there. Yeah. No, what inspired that, which my wife will get like really embarrassed about this, but like we were like totally role playing a thing because oh. I, I used to like train her. You know, yeah. And it just wow, uh, <laughs> thing, one thing led to another. <laughs> you, I I don't have any clothes on, right? Yeah, we this finished. is how you do a pull up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's so uh, like uh, you're you know, I'm like I'm like, hey, well, I'm now here. I, I, might get, as well now get, I, I might as well get some reps in. Yeah. You know, you want to? You ever see me do pull ups without hands? Check this out. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Wow. Trying to do curls. <laughs> wow. Now I get it. Now wow. I get no, it. No, I, I like strong. It. Am I? I like him in the bedroom. Yeah, so that's exactly what I thought. Uh, you know, originally that I had set up the plan to be all in the garage, but the more I thought about that, like, like Doug's point, I like to do it either right out of the shower um, or like in my like room naked. So it's like- it, That makes gonna, sense. You're going to do that in the garage. It also looks nice. It's kind of a nice piece. That's what I thought. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think we'll have them customly mounted on there. I was even thinking, yeah. of, like I said, about getting like yeah. these little- uh, you know, I mean, little, they have the stands that can just like vertically stand. They do have those. I like yeah. put them on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. The wall would be cool. Have you seen how I did it at my house? I do. I like this. Yeah. I, I really liked how yeah, that's so done. Yeah, so I had somebody put uh, like, there was like a like a wood thing on top and bottom. That's what I think oh, it would look cool. cool like that. And then if I could get like a little LED screen- that gives you like instructions or something on yeah, it, yeah, like a yeah. little video that we can put oh, on yeah, it. Yeah, I like yeah. that. That sounds really good. Okay, cool. Hey, speaking so of working out, so I got to tell you guys, this is really it's hilarious. So, I was hanging out with Jessica yesterday, and Aurelius uh, is you know playing with his toys or whatever, and we're talking, and I hear Aurelius in the background going, mm, mm. "I'm like, huh?" So I turn around. <laughs> now Jessica has a 12 pound dumbbell in the living room because she, now that she's feeling better, she's out of that first trimester. She's not puking all day long. She's been, you know, here and there doing exercises throughout yeah. the day, getting her body back ready to back into lifting full. Yeah. Full workouts. So there's a 12 pound dumbbell on the ground. It's and it's one of those iron full metal ones or whatever. So I turn around and there's my 19 month old and he literally squatting down and with one hand, he's like trying to lift it. And he's like, and he's dragging it because he's actually starting to get it off the floor, but with one, one, one hand. And I turn around, I'm like, is he trying to lift the dumbbell? So without saying anything, I kind of walk over and I'm watching him and he's just going after it. So finally, I, I kind of stopped him and I said, hey, buddy. I said, you trying to lift the dumbbell? And he goes, huh. He does that when he means, once he wants to say yes. He does this <laughs> he high pitch. Uh. Yeah, like that. <laughs> so I said, okay. I said, um, do you want me to get a smaller dumbbell so that you could, you could try lifting it better? Uh -huh. Okay. So I go in the garage and I get an eight pound dumbbell. And I put it down and then I go, all right, you got to use two hands though. Try using two hands. So he's like, and he like, he squats down, does like this perfect deadlift, grabs it with two. I didn't teach him anything. Okay. So if, if you watch this video, it looks like I'm, I'm not nothing. He grabs it. Epigenetics. He stands up with it and he's like so proud walking around with this eight pound dumbbell. You ready? Go, lift it. Lift, lift. Come on, use your strength. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, put it down. 
then he walks over the 12 pound dumbbell and he points to it. And I said, no, nah, I think it's too heavy. And they grabbed my leg and he's like pushing me towards it. Said, all right, you want to try 12? Put the 12 down. He lifts it up. I'm like, this kid, I mean, does he like doing this on his own? This is crazy. Yeah, I wonder where he gets that from. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I think when well, he watches his mom, I think, try to exercise or whatever. Yeah. But he does that throughout the house. He'll try to lift things. You guys well, saw when he was pushing heavy objects. It's like too, his favorite right? thing to like, do. And then lifting. Dude, he's a natural lifter. Oh, Didn't right. I ask you? I, I, I could have sworn that I read a study that said that, like, okay, for for you example, right? You your your boy is what, 15 years old? 16? What? 16. Oh, 16. my oldest? Yeah. 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 16. And when you had him, were you skinny? Were you or you or you already starting when, to get bigger when I was a kid? Yeah. Oh, I mean, I was really skinny until I started working out. No, no. When you had him, when you. When oh you, no, I've been working out. Oh, so you'd already Always. been pretty big. Yeah. Okay, so then you maybe think about epigenetics. Yeah. So like, so I read an article that it was an article or a study. I can't remember which one it was, but I remember asking you about oh. it, and I can't remember what you mm -hmm. said, I've but that this. you you like or like use me for example. Like I am definitely way bigger today than I was in my twenties. That I would pass more yeah. of the more of your characteristics like now. in that moment. Yeah, right? I yeah. think it has. You're passing on. I think it has more to do with his mom. Like Jessica has, she's got. Well, like, no, no, no. I'm not. I'm. I'm not saying that explains a really his strength. Yeah. I mean that obviously. I think that has a lot to do with her. But I'm saying, do you think that makes it has a factor? Do you well, think that's true? Sure. It yeah, is studies, true. Yeah, studies do show that. Yeah, I don't right. think it's everything. Right, uh, of course not. But it definitely plays a role um, in uh, you know, what, like they show this with obesity. They show this with um, stress adaptation. Mm -hmm. Like if you're in a very stressed environment while you're pregnant, then you, you have a you, the baby tends to have a heightened More stress anxious, response. Yeah. yeah, when they're born, like as as if their bodies in the womb are adapting to the potential environment. Right. That they're going to be setting born. them up for success in that environment. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, it doesn't explain everything because then there's also just your genetics in general and how big of a role those play. And, and I, like I said, Jessica's got, she's got these really crazy muscle building, bodybuilding kind of genetics that she didn't realize until she was in her twenties when she started uh, traveling with uh, the circus and, and she would, you know, climb the, the silks and stuff. And she just built crazy muscles. That's, she's got, she's got that. I don't, I, my, mine is all like grinding hard work since I was a kid, like yeah. consistent. Yeah, yeah. Hers is like, she works out a little bit and she gains muscle and it's like, okay, yeah, yeah. well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, it just makes me wonder, like, if I would have had Max it, when I was twenty versus having Max now when I'm forty. Like, if he got better, <laughs> better genetics of mine being yeah. older than if I when I was. Young. Well, he's got those calves, but that's not for me, right? That's from. <laughs> it's definitely not for me. <laughs> that's not your calves. <laughs> no, he's that's... definitely. He's not. He's definitely. Uh, like your your son is like stocky and thick. Like Max is Max is not uh, that thick, but he's also not like I was lanky. I was even, even at, at his, his age. Yeah, even at his age, you could see that I was. I was. He's definitely more solid. You know what's interesting too? Kids change a lot from when they're little, little, right? To like, so who knows? Right, I know. Man. Like in the next four or five years, we'll have a better idea. Yeah, and then when they go through puberty, like how does that change? And uh, it's oh, interesting man. the personality. Because I feel like I, I, I feel like Domenico looks just like what you probably look like. He, look, he looks like exactly like I look like. Yeah. When I see him walking around, like it's just that's his, what you're built. Yeah, his yeah. posture and the way yeah. I don't know. He just I feel like man, I moved just like that. I look just yeah. like that. You yeah. know? Yeah, yeah. No. yeah. No, that's that's definitely closer um, to how I was. And he He's, he's got uh, a lot of some of my personality traits, some of his mom's too. It is interesting to see some of the traits that come out. And you know what's funny is sometimes you'll see traits that you didn't realize. For example, um, Aurelius likes to, if he has a, a plate of food. So Jessica and I eat very differently when we eat. If I have a plate of food, I eat uh, very, uh, I eat sectional. So I'll eat all my meat, then I'll eat some of this, all of this, then I'll eat all of that. It's like a, an order. I don't mix. Yeah. Jessica goes, bite of this, bite of this, bite of this. And she goes in a circle or she'll put them all on the same fork. And we always make fun of each other. She, she says, I'm weird. I say, she's weird, whatever. Aurelius, he, he, will, he has to eat one of each in a row. He will not eat one and then finish one and then eat the next one. So he'll eat like little meat, rice, vegetable. Just like his mom. Meat, yeah, just like her. I'm like, I didn't know that was an inheritable thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's so That's weird. Strange. Yeah. I think there's a lot that's inheritable. There's, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, speaking of this, it reminds me of when we were at the uh, restaurant, and um, I've I always like you guys make fun of me all the time for like drawing, doodling, you know, like whatever, yeah. just just inappropriate shit, right? Yeah, and uh, I just love doing that, and like <laughs> it just naturally. So Everett was like. Uh, writing some word or whatever had two O's in it. And then he decided to turn those into boobs 
and like put like two nipples to the what? inside and then so and then so uh you know naturally i'm like oh wow i'll do you one better than put that so up. i write a like boob with like b o o b and do two side boobs and and, yeah. and and courtney is like what are you doing <laughs> i'm like what this is hilarious and also he was already doing it anyways like i'm just showing him you know giving him more ammo so he can show his friends and yeah. they can have a laugh you know it's like dude who cares it's like it's <laughs> it's like harmless funny shit yeah your, then you get in boy. trouble for it dude dad's yeah. getting trouble for shit I get like in that. trouble like all i told time, you, i tell you what my dad got in trouble because he he got a, him and my brother got a ticket for racing each other <laughs> on the freeway <laughs> my mom's like what you raced your teenage son on the freeway yeah like what, what kind of an example are you setting you know my <laughs> dad's like oh you know it's okay we're fine you know what I mean? oh my God. sometimes you get tested yeah just terrible you know what are, what are you i feel do? like that's an instagram waiting to happen right there the dumb things dads do oh yeah, yeah. We, we, do, we, <laughs> right? do, we do the worst the, the worst stuff it's so bad anyway so um so what's what's this thing with mark cuban's pharmaceutical oh yeah website? did you guys see this uh -uh. So, so it was an I've article been that I read. It. So he started a pharmaceutical company. Now, how is he? Okay, so I don't know how. Okay, he has. It's not a pharma company. It's a company that sells pharmaceuticals. Yeah, yeah, okay. exactly. So it's like it's actually competing with pharmaceutical companies. He's got over a hundred of the most popular drugs that he's selling on there. All generic, right? Yeah, all generic yeah. that are like a 15% mark. I didn't know you could do this. Now, how I thought he, it was so regulated you couldn't do this. Now, how is he getting? That's what I was going to ask. How is he getting around? Because my idea is that he's allowing um, generic drugs to be imported to be sold mm. because the American market's so regulated. That's why a lot of people go online and will buy drugs from other countries, even though yeah. they're technically not supposed to, right. because they'll pay a quarter of the price. Is he doing something like that? So I know that almost all pharmaceutical drugs are a minimum of 100% markup. And his like big commitment is 15% margins. Oh, so he's just cutting the margins yeah. way down. Yeah. So how he's doing that, I don't know. I don't know if he, he has ways to produce himself. I don't know if he's importing and then cutting costs. I don't know if he's cutting out middlemen yeah. and people. Is he taking a hit initially? Oh, so look at no, his thing says no middleman, no price gains, oh, huge drug savings. He's cutting the middleman out. Okay. So, But well, how can he can do that? I didn't know he could do this. It's called costplusdrugs.com. Is that what it is? Yes. Wow. wow. Huge though, right? That's interesting. Yeah. Have you guys ever looked at the price cool, actually. of popular generic drugs in other countries versus here? It, yeah. Oh, I have. It's, oh, yeah, it's it, cheap compared to here. Oh my God. So Bro, cheap, yeah. it doesn't even make sense. Well, isn't our country the only country that allows you to advertise on television for drugs? Yes. It's one of the only ones. And yeah. also we limit competition like, like three countries. And, like and we limit competition like crazy. So you're stuck with having to pay these ridiculous prices. If it, if they allowed it to be really competitive worldwide, yeah. price the drug prices would go way the hell down. I mean, you could buy generic drugs from like India, for example, at way reduced prices than you would here. Now the argument is, oh, they're on, they're not regulated like they're here or whatever. Baloney. I think the FDA's got some definite value, but I think part of their role is to protect the the interests of the pharmaceutical companies as well. Sure. You look at the people on the on, who run that who run the FDA. Many of them were ex-executives of these massive pharmaceutical companies. And part of these regulations are, how can we maintain- Are you them? reading about it, Doug? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a lot of generics. And the retail price is substantially lower than- um, I mean, what they're charging is substantially lower than what you could- Wait, that's what I was saying. All of them are marked. So your average dr drug, pharmaceutical drug, is marked up over 100%. His commitment is 15%. So he's take, he's just taking them and saying, we're, we're not going to- I yeah, mean- this, this seems absolutely crazy. There's something, I don't know how, how to pronounce it. It's imatinib. Uh, it's a generic for Gleevec. Retail price is $2,500. They're selling it for $14.40. Wow. Are you kidding me? That's Man. that's a that's a big difference. There's a, no, there's, I know, <laughs> wow. there's, I, I, there's, I know there's like uh, diabetic medications right now that are really, really expensive uh, for diabetics to get a hold of, like outrageously priced mm -hmm. that should not be that expensive that has gone up in the like the last two or three you, years. You know what's going to be really weird? And this may happen Hopefully in our lifetime. It disrupts it. This may happen in our lifetime. I didn't know longer. you could though. I thought there was so much regulation. I want to look yeah. into it because here's, here's one that you recognize is metformin. Yeah. Uh, and, it's normally retail price is twenty dollars a tablet. They're selling it for three ninety, three dollars and ninety cents. Yeah, that's a big difference, huge difference. So I, this may happen in our lifetimes, but if you look at the technology of three D printing, at some point they'll be able to three D print uh, drugs, compounds. Yeah. So they'll take molecules or whatever, 
3 D print and create drugs uh, uh, from. Well, you'll still need the organic materials. material That's to, it. to fill it with, right? Yeah. Which, well, you got your basic materials. Yeah. And you can turn it into. But I feel like when, when that, that happen, happens, that's gonna be crazy. Yeah. When that happens, though, then they'll they'll have like a they'll charge a ridiculous amount for the code, you know, or for the uh, the blueprint. <laughs> yeah. Good luck trying to maintain that, like regularly. You no, know, you're right. I mean, yeah. Be, download a movie for be, free if I want. Be, right that'll now. be interesting. Some some powers that be will step in and, and regulate or stop. It's that, gonna get yeah. weird, dude. Because three D printing. Like Pelosi's husband can't even get in trouble for fucking being a drunk driver and hitting people, dude. Oh, oh God. Don't get me started God. on this. Hey, speaking of which, did you guys see <laughs> Why that? Why does everybody just like roll right past that? You know, Crazy. Yeah, Gavin Newsom. We almost did. We almost talked and didn't talk about it. Like, just saw did, that and I was like, wow. Did you guys see wow. abuse of power, privilege? Oh, Come on, guys. Oh, but hold on. There's a little bit of like, you, people are starting to get a little annoyed. Did you guys see in San Francisco, the district attorney? Oh, did they? I saw last night. It was recalled. To, he did get recalled. He got recalled. In California. In California. You know what a big deal that is? That's a huge deal. San Francisco, of all places. That is a huge One deal. Win so, in a world of shit. He's, he's a super, he's got super progressive uh, crime policies. And the result of that is crime has exploded. So basically yeah. it's like, you know, if you if you only steal, if you steal under this I amount. I forgot that was gonna, last night. Oh, dude. It was a big so, deal last Because night. crime has exploded over there. So I have family members that live there. This is true. This is, this is true. Not everywhere, but in a lot of parts of the city, people leave their car windows down and their glove boxes open and empty and their trunks open so people don't, so yeah. no one will smash their no, windows. So, bro, there's memes about it. It's so bad. Yeah. That's so crazy. There's memes all over about it. It's so bad. I just posted one of them. Did you see one of them? Like, visited San Francisco, beautiful here today, and it's a it's a shot of the Golden Gate Bridge, but it's a, sh a, a shot from the back of the car looking through a broken window. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. 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 No. It's like, dude, so well, bad. Well, they recalled they recall them. Wow. And so Wow, that's a are, big deal. It is a very big deal. Well, they so. have to live there. That's the thing. A lot of these ideas and these progressive aggressive ways of thinking it's like it sounds good but do you actually live there and live through these policies yeah. like these people that live through it when, when, it's hell dude. when was the last time a democrat was recalled in california oh well we did remember we did here with uh when schwarzenegger won that was a long time ago though what was his name he was uh, recalled was it gray davis that got gray recalled davis was yeah, it? yeah. It was, remember we had all those rolling blackouts and uh by the way our our power grid still sucks yeah. you know what's funny they still shut it i'm gonna off. go a little segue here California has pushing these policies to get rid of gas powered cars so everybody has an electric car. I don't know how the, our electric grid is going to support that. We already go. We already have rolling blackouts when it gets too hot. Bro. So everybody's going to have a car they're going to plug into their house. I have so many gas powered engines now at my house. It's going to be like extinct here. I'm just like hoarding it. No, you're not. Yes. I'm going to be the biggest polluter ever. No, shut up, shut yeah. up. Well, you know, what? Yeah, actually, one of the biggest me. things that they say is- Just gonna, is going to drive a cool you know, the, you know, car. One of the biggest challenges with electric cars, just in general, is the like the raw materials from the- I mean- Yeah, the, the minerals U, and stuff. The minerals and stuff. Yeah. The U.S. is only- We only have like one or two mines in the entire U.S. That's Most, why- that's Like why, 80% of it comes from China. That's why Elon said that Tesla is going to get into the, the mining, mining business. Yeah, the mining business. And even when he does, though, it's still going to- We're going to still be- Hey, look, I'll tell you what. I was skeptical, but I'm, I'm very- I like the direction that it's going the competition's ramping up and these electric cars are becoming le less and less expensive mm -hmm. more and more available charging stations are popping Dude, up so I, I think this is a great thing i didn't what know i, I didn't ahead. know that uh his patents he he what's it called not outsourced but he like basically uh, opened it up for anybody to be able to like you, oh, yeah. open api yeah yeah Mm -hmm. That's that's insane. No no other companies really do that. Well, he did it with that intention, right? Yeah. He did it to create. That was like his mission with Tesla yeah. was to create competition in that space to force all of them, like GM and them, to start doing that. Which is exactly yeah, what happened. Like it's going to yeah. be better for everybody if we have more electric cars. So that was his thought yeah. process, which is really no. All, all, all joking aside, I think. But this now you can hear everyone. Meep. You know what? Hey, I wonder. I wonder if There's they're going to make. To complain about. <laughs> hey, I wonder. If no, I mean in a bad way. You're not going to hear. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know, I'm, I'm oh, going to miss yeah. that. Uh, I'm going to miss that sound, dude. Yeah. Well, you know, I was wondering about that. I wonder if they are going to add like sound effects. I was just going to say they already do. So you already do like in cars. I know the I the should. Honda Civic Type R does this. Um, so in so so many cars, it does such a good do job of like bringing down uh, noise pollution and stuff like that. They pipe it through the speakers. That people that have high performance cars that you buy it if you buy a, a Type R, you yeah. you want like a race car feel and sound. So one of the biggest complaints was when they they damped the sound down, they people got pissed. So then they they pump it through the speakers. 
Yeah. As artificial. Uh-huh. So when you're driving, that's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> yeah, but you can want it, it outside too. I like, know, it's stupid. It's still, I don't know how I feel about well, it. Well, because also like that whole thing where an electric car like backs up, I don't hear it. And I've almost been hit a few times by these I people, actually dude. got this, I didn't tell you guys this. I Someone almost hit my Camaro this weekend. So I took my, I, I was cruising the Camaro down, uh, uh, down the coast and um, it was a Tesla. And so a car, I'm, I'm in the, it was a two lane. I'm heading back home to my house and I already have, I don't have the best, I don't, you know, those cars, you can't see very well out of the back, the rear and the mirrors are so small and stuff, but I had a car uh, hit their brakes pretty hard and was turning. And so I moved into the left lane to go around them and then was coming just to go around and they moved right back in. And the time that I was going around them, some asshole behind me that's in a Tesla thought it'd be probably cool to like smash on it and try and pass me on the right when I was just naturally coming back in the lane. And when I looked over my shoulder, he was swerving and he just barely missed my Ooh. rear end and went around to the left of me. I didn't hear him. And it was because yeah. I because I, I didn't see him. One, I didn't think someone. But if you had a normal car engine, I would have heard you getting on it from on the, on that side before I moved in and it would have would have caused me to look yeah. back again yeah. or not move over but because it was a Tesla I didn't yeah. hear it and he was getting on no, it No I I yeah. I, th I think it's great so long as it's uh it's done <clears throat> through markets and competition but when they pass these policies there's a lot of unintended consequences and I I mean the one I said is really what really happen if California does go through with some of their laws and no more gas ca powered cars after I don't know what it was 2035 if they don't fix our power grid, we're no, fucked. No, bro, that's coming in the next year or two. We're gonna be screwed. It's yeah. like twenty twenty five, I think. Look at look at this up to, to I think GM. I think GM. That's part of why the, the whole reason why I wanted the the Cadillac CT five. Mm. It's the it's going to be the last V eight, uh, last of its breed. Yeah. yeah, supercharged engine that I think GM makes. Would you look up when when is GM stop making gas powered engines? I think they have. I think they signed a commitment at twenty twenty five, dude. Wow. I think that's what I read. I mean, look, it's I again, it's all good, but it, we got to be careful with the unintended consequences of twenty thirty five. Oh, it was twenty thirty five. You're 2035, so. right. My bad. Yeah. Not again. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just, I know, Why are you giving him uh, I more ham? What a dick. Gave, gave a layup right there. Should have done that. No, but I mean, again, like, okay, look, it, 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 as it warms up, do you guys get you lose your power? It happens all the time here. It's like, what's going on? And they'll do those oh, rolling blackouts. I don't yeah. know how they think they're going to support all these electric vehicles. Do you know it's also a hustle that Ridiculous. I heard? Remember when the, the generator guy got, you know, people got in trouble for reselling generators? I was going to do this a couple of years ago because every year in July, which we're coming up on in San Jose, like ACs go down. And if your AC goes down in July in the Bay Area, you are not going to be able to get it fixed for at least like two weeks yeah. because everybody's are getting repaired. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, if you go down to Home Depot or something like that and you want to get like a window AC that you plug in or what that sold out, sold Gone. out everywhere. Yeah. And so uh, the, every year I tell Katrina this, like, I'm going to buy, I'm gonna buy one and flip it, sell it for like two or three times the price. But remember that when the blackouts happened, I sold a, my generator for a, a lot. A guy that, got, yeah. didn't a guy go to jail for that? Oh, remember that when the when oh the, for like a hoarding? Uh, yeah, like he went and bought a bunch of them up, and he was like doing exactly that with the generators, and they they busted him. I don't know what the law is on that. Why you can't? Why can't you? It's do called that? price gouging, and yeah. um, in some cases it makes sense, in other cases it doesn't, because what happens <clears throat> is if you don't allow manufacturers to raise the price based off of demand, you just end up with shortages. Or like what happened with toilet paper during yeah, the pandemic. During the pandemic, what they should have done was raise it through the roof. Is allowed toilet yeah. paper prices to rise. Instead, yeah. what they did is you can only buy four rolls. You know, we got to we got to ration it, right? Yeah. Um, it doesn't work that way. But if you raise the price, what happens is then manufacturers or suppliers get the signal. Charmin goes, "Oh shit, we got toilet more. papers. Yeah, let's go. Let's make more because it's the prices are able to go up. Plus, they can afford to take that risk of all of a sudden producing way more because and, the price. Yeah, because they made more money off of you. Actually, the price you up. actually get more producers and, and yeah. more of that. But more you know, that's stuff. a problem. The problem with that is that doesn't fit the narrative, right? We that's just separating the this creating more of a wealth gap than just the rich can afford toilet paper now. Yeah, now all no. the poor have to wipe with their hand. No, like, the, that's not rich fair. people wipe with with their dollars, Leaves, dude. <laughs> with yeah, their hundreds. Yeah, stupid. Go get the hundreds. That's why, though. I mean, that's the that's the messaging. So it's just like, that's not fair. Yeah, you know? Anyway. Hey, I want to give you guys an update on, remember how I told you guys, uh, Jessica kept stealing my Caldera. Oh yeah. She bought her a bottle. Loves it. Yeah. She, so obviously she's, you know, she's female. She's used lots of different skincare products. I have, don't have tons of experience, 
But she's like, this is one of the best ones I've ever used. Did you tell ever. me, do you, are you paying attention to like, is she using all three? Is she using just one? Do you she's know? just using the serum right now. Just the serum. Just the serum right now. And I would have used the moisturizer. Yeah. Well, I, I have that. So I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll let That's my favorite. But I, she's like, it's the best one. She tells me, she's like, it's one of the best ones I've ever used. They're exploding too. You guys see them popping up a lot. Yes. Oh yeah. They're, they're, they're making moves. I've seen them grow quite a bit in the last yes, year. Yes. Yes. So. No, I love them. So, and, and I know we're going up to, to dry ass Truckee. So I got mine with me. <laughs> yeah. That's, so you guys oh, got that's a good point. It's yeah. I better, I better stock up. I leave, so I leave a bottle up there because mm. of that. So I, I have you a bottle. I have a bottle of of Caldera up there, and a and a bottle of lotion that I leave oh, I at like that house. For almost that turned into a skeleton, dude. Yeah. I'm up there. Yeah. <laughs> just, just, if I'm just, there for a week, it's like, like yeah. the wind could blow. Dude, no, I'm so I'm. I'm Justin too. leaves a trail of dust <laughs> where he goes. Where he goes <laughs> ashy, it's yeah. just, very ashy. Hit him on the back. Yeah. To, uh, <laughs> oh, what's going on? Forest fire. Hey, look, I know you've heard of the benefits of CBD, but maybe you've used CBD products and felt nothing. Well, that's because most products that say they have CBD suck. You want something that is full spectrum. So we work with a company called Ned, and their products are not just full of CBD, but they're full spectrum, full of other active cannabinoids, terpenes, flavonoids, and trichomes. You actually feel their product when you take it. No joke. You take it 30 to 45 minutes later, you're like, wow, this is actually doing something. You got to go check out Ned. They're the best hemp oil product uh, that we found, and we've worked with them for a very long time because of that. So if you want to get a discount, go through our link. Go to helloned.com. That's H-E-L-L-O-N-E-D.com forward slash mind pump, and you'll get yourself a hookup. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Thomas from Utah. My question, basically my question revolves around whether it would be better to bulk or cut first. And the context is I'm 28 years old, been consistently lifting for probably 10 years, um, six foot seven, 250 pounds. And, you know, I've done successful bulks and cuts in the past. Um, in I kind of get the mind fuck, right? Where when I'm cutting, you feel smaller and weaker, but you look good with your shirt off. And when you're bulking, you feel strong in the gym, but you kind of get the man, I'm getting chubby. And so my question is, is basically from this point where I'm at, is it preferable or easier to, you know, try to bulk up, get to a, a weight and size that I really like, and then lean down while preserving muscle or lean out first, get shredded and try to bulk from there while keeping a low body fat percentage. Okay. We need a little bit more information. By the way, you're a big dude, six, yeah. seven. Yeah. 250? Holy we do cow. need a little bit more, but I could tell yeah. you it's going to be bulk first and cut. Yeah, but but do you know how many calories you're eating a day right now, Thomas? Yeah, so I, it depends. When I go through cuts, I'm usually at like 3,200. If I'm bulking, I'm up closer to 4,000. Okay. You know what? Um, I like what Adam said, but there's no reason why you can't do mini cuts and mini bulks. So yeah. if you're trying to build um, like lean body mass, minimize fat gain, uh, there's no reason why you can't do like a three week mini bulk followed by, I don't know, a two week or one and a half week mini cut. If you want to trend towards building, if okay. you want to trend towards getting leaner, you can kind of reverse that a little bit go three to two or three to one. I love three, one right here. Three, three weeks of bulking followed by a week of cutting three weeks of bulking followed by one week yeah. of cutting. And it's a small, <clears throat> small surplus, small kind of small deficit all while having really good exercise programming. Um, but the bulk obviously outweighs the cut because it's three weeks versus one, but just like that okay. and just keep it nice and consistent and focus on your workout programming. And what you should see with that is a nice, some nice, consistent lean body mass gains with minimal fat gain. And if anything, if you do this right, you may actually get yourself a little leaner. I think you'll get leaner. Yeah. If you do this right, you'll, you'll lean out if you don't go too dramatic on the swings. Right. So when you go to your, and for your size, six, seven, two fifty, uh, I think Four, I mean, obviously, I don't know exactly where your metabolism's at and your activity, but 4,000 calories is a good, healthy amount of calories. It's not crazy, definitely not for your size. So 4,000 calories uh, when you're bulking and then when you're cutting around 3,000 is is not bad. And so, <clears throat> and doing the 3-1 like that, I think would be great. Are you following, uh, what's your program? Yeah, which like? programs have you have you done of ours yet? Uh, I've, I, I've got pretty much all of them. I think the only ones I don't have are power lift and the new symmetry. So I have uh, I actually, I started running anabolic probably a year and a half ago. I was like 230 and I've worked up to 250 and I think I'm around 10 or 11% body fat. So I stayed pretty lean doing it, but I, I kind of just cycle through different math programs. Okay. Dude, you're a unit. Six, seven, 250, 10%, 11% body <laughs> yeah, fat. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Holy cow. 
Yeah, maps on a bullock really works. Hey, it's it's all it's all the uh, it's all the mind pump programs. <laughs> yeah, and sponsorship we, we, we appreciate that. We, no diet. genetic <laughs> factors. You, yeah. you were six foot awesome. when you started. You got to gain seven <laughs> inches of height on that. Too. Jeez, you know, uh, Thomas. Story. <clears throat> Thomas, I'm going to send you map symmetry because I really it's yeah, one of our needs one, one of our most valuable programs by far. Okay, one of our most valuable. And you've been working out for a little while, big dude. You got a lot of muscle on you. I think you'll notice some imbalances and and after symmetry, going back to a program like anabolic or aesthetic it's like you'll feel a huge yeah. difference so we'll and i've never really done the the uh, iso training so that'll be awesome oh yeah it's only the first two weeks after that it's a lot of unilateral training but then you finish off with five by, five by five yeah and i think you'll you'll really like the way you feel afterwards well hey i love it three three weeks bulk one week cut and then kind of run symmetry as soon as i finish strong here that'll be awesome exactly i like Perfect. it yeah thanks man thanks for calling in hey thank you guys awesome to talk to you thanks you for all you do you got it thank thanks you. thomas yeah, that mini cut, mini bulk, um, you know, kind of ratio or, or strategy is really good because the challenge with bulking is in the beginning, it's very muscle anabolic. At some point, it starts to, to yeah, trend more towards off. body fat, right? And then with a cut, it's like you get the fat loss, but then you stand out long enough it's, and then you're fighting muscle loss, right? One way to counter that is to alternate. I, I also love the psychological part of it. Yeah. You know, one of, the, one of the hardest things about bulking or cutting for an extended period of time is just that, you know, man, I've just it gets so mundane. Yeah, it does get mundane. I'm, when, I'm, when I used to be in these long bulks, right? Because I was in bulks forever when I was younger. It'd be like, oh my God, I'm stuffing myself. All I'm doing is having, yeah. and like, you're just constantly thinking about overeating all the time. And then the reverse is true when you're cutting. It's like, oh my God, I've been starving yep. for weeks and weeks. And it's like, I feel like I can do anything really hard and consistent for three weeks. You know, so having these, and you could even go two, two, one. You know, yep. you, you suggested that even as an option. Like, so if you have a hard time sticking to something for three weeks, I, that would be the other recommendation because I love just interrupting that. Like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. I've been, I can, I can, I can be disciplined for two or three weeks straight, and then I get to go the other direction. I just think it's it's great uh, psychologically, and I think it's it does better for the body too. Yeah, and, and studies show they call them diet breaks in studies uh, that people actually lose more body fat and preserve more muscle. Doing something like this, and bodybuilders have done this for a long time. I don't like the way the bod that bodybuilders talk about it, like cheap meals and stuff like that. But um, it's been observed for a long time that it just works better. I think a big part of it has to do with the psychological piece for sure. Yeah. Our next caller is Christopher from Hawaii. Christopher, what's happening? Hi, right, good morning, gentlemen. How's it? Good. How's it going? All right, going well. Um, thank you for taking time out of your busy lives and schedule to answer my question today. I'll go ahead and jump right into my first question. After running through MAPS Powerlift, would it be beneficial to run through it again to put up bigger numbers on the bar? So the context for this question is my current goal is to see how high I can get my big five lifts, my squat, deadlift, bench press, overhead press, barbell row. I haven't done purely strength-based program to maximize my big lifts in a long time. For the past few years, my programming's been focused and based on a combination of performance, hypertrophy, and five by five style training. I'm pretty happy with where I am physically and my current fitness, but now I want to see how purely strong I can get. I know that running through MAPS Powerlift won't make me as strong as I can be one time around. Would you suggest going through it again a second time, or would you suggest a protocol of transitioning into MAPS Strong? and or performance before returning to power lift. And question 1.5 to that would be, how would you incorporate isometric training into power lift? Oh, good questions. Mm. All right. So I, I need to ask you a little bit for more information before I give you the right answer. Do you have any, uh, any nagging joint pain or aches or pains uh, after following mass performance? Exactly or do you feel pretty good? Yeah. How do you feel? No, I'm feeling pretty good after running mass performance. I definitely felt um, it, it was definitely different than what I was used to running. No, I meant MAPS and Powerlift. Sorry, uh, correction. How do you feel after running MAPS Powerlift? Do you feel any imbalances or anything like that? Because that'll... that'll so I'm Yeah, ahead. absolutely. Good question. I'm currently running through it the first time. I just finished phase one. I'm just moving into phase two oh, okay. where the volume is going to start ramping up. Okay. Uh, well, the, tr so the truth is then the we're going to be able to give you a better answer at the end of this because the, where Sal's going mm -hmm. and I, Justin was going to do the same thing, which is the same thing I would have done. Yeah. Cause here's the thing, running it back to back um, absolutely could be, could be fine. 
But the things that I would want to know after you get done is how you feel. Mm -hmm. If you, if uh, there, and that Sal's alluding to uh, imbalance, potential imbalances. Justin was going to say something about aches and pains because these are the things that you typically start to notice when you're running like a, a five by five or just the the core lifts. You're working mainly in the sagittal plane all the time, and you're pressing you're pressing heavy weight. What tends to happen is you, your joints start to start talking to you after a while. That it's like, ooh, it's time for me to maybe focus on a little bit of mobility or move in different planes of motion or maybe isometrics or unilateral training. So <clears throat> it's hard for us to probably give you your best answer since you're just starting power lift. Really, that's what you need to assess at the end. Of it. You technically could run it back to back yeah. Yeah. And, and be awesome. It could be and, and be totally fine. But I wouldn't want you to do that if I asked the questions that Sal and Justin were starting to ask you. Uh, and you were answering me like, yeah, you know, my elbow is feeling a little, mm -hmm. you know, rough a little bit, or I noticed I've got this little, little shift in little knee pain. Yeah. So th that's what we'd be looking for after running that. Now, if you come out of power lift and you're like, I feel the best I've ever felt in my life. I'm hitting PRs, no joints, no achiness, no low back pain, no nothing going on. Shit, run it back. Yeah. And, and you might very well feel that way. Cause you said earlier in your question that you focused before doing power lift, you did mm -hmm. a lot of performance based workouts. So you might you might you might just feel afterwards phenomenal and continue on with another round of power lift. Especially since this is your goal. I mean the specificity of it and and really like teaching your body how to maximize these lifts and get better at the mechanics and you know generating force. Like that's something that you can continually get better at uh with with reps. So it just really amounts to if you if you do notice any of these kind of imbalances and aches and pains and things to jump into something like I would even say something like symmetry yep. uh, to really address and then go right back to power lift after that. Yeah, and and by the way, there's nothing wrong, and I, I don't often say this, but let's say you did power lift and then you said, you know, what? I feel okay, I feel good. Let me try it again. Then halfway through, you're like, oh, I'm noticing some hip pain. Nothing wrong with stopping it and going to a program like Map Symmetry. So, and I typically don't recommend that because people have an issue jumping from program to program. Typically, I say follow all the way through. But in this particular circumstance, there's nothing wrong with, you know, second round, halfway through, noticing some of the stuff and then doing a program like symmetry or performance that will help balance you out. Because ultimately, that's what's going to lead to the bigger numbers. An imbalance or pain is going to, you know, obviously that's going to crush your strength. You're not going to be able to get as strong as you can if you've got, uh, you know, movement pattern issues and, and aches and pains. Absolutely. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And, and then the part with isometrics, uh, I do, that is isometrics are a great yeah. way to prime Especially your workout sticking points too. And sticking point. Yeah. I mean, really before your workout, five to 10 minutes of isometrics is mm -hmm. great. Or Perfect you can way to prime. Yeah. So maps prime will be great. Um, and there's, you know, the correctional exercise in there are isometric based, a lot of them. Or when you're going through power lift, especially the second time around, if you notice that your squat gets stuck at the bottom, there's nothing wrong with pausing a squat at the bottom for three to five seconds, which is kind of an isometric hold, um, just kind of work through different sticking points. But, but I mean, the best way to implement them for most people is five to 10 minutes uh, be before your workout. Yeah, I like to, uh, I use the, uh, in the program it has written to do like say on squat day, the squat primer and at the end do the, uh, the, the post primers, I'm doing that. And I also have uh, prime so that I use to use oh. on my rest and recovery days. So oh, you're definitely yeah. feel, oh, yeah. uh, perfect, feel good stuff from that. So um, yeah, I'll just kind of, I guess, add some, uh, use some of the isometric holds and stuff, uh, say at the beginning to get more uh, muscle uh, fiber recruitment and CNS uh, activation. Awesome. And then are you, yep. so you're phase one, right? Or you just finished phase one? Are you? I, I, ju I just finished phase. I'm just moving into phase two. All right. How's your strength changes so far in phase one? Um, so far they've, you know, they've come up a little bit. Not, uh, I've been, I've been lifting for 20 years, so, um, yeah. but they have still gone up uh, a couple pounds more than I have expected at least. So that's a good sign. Oh, that's I've also been eating at a caloric surplus. You know, I'm not restricting calories or anything like that, just to make sure that I have enough uh, strength and energy and that I have the ability to put on the muscle that I need to put on while I'm running the program. Nice. So. nice. Well, yeah. After 20 yeah. years of training, that's pretty good. It's hard to get stronger if, if you've been working out that long. I it's, know, it sounds like you're doing really good, man. Yeah. And honestly, running back again, if you feel great afterwards, but just, you know, the things that we are talking about really uh, be honest with yourself when uh, afterwards. And if you notice those things that might mean take a break, go to symmetry for uh, that program and then come back. But if you feel great, there's nothing wrong with you. running. We'll, back. we'll send symmetry to you if you don't have it. Okay, Christopher. Oh, I appreciate that. You got it, man.
And I actually have uh, just another quick side question, not as big of a deal, but I noticed through uh, a couple of your programs. So for instance, performance and power lift, um, you have walking lunges. So my question for that is, do you, do the, do the programs ask uh, or kind of call for the lunge to be the total number of lunges or the total number of lunges for each side? Cause the weight that I choose will greatly differ depending on if that's the total number that I'm going to be going or the total number that I'm going to be doing for each side. Yeah. If you're walking lunges, it's total. Mm -hmm. If it's like uh front step or back step lunges, it's yeah, per leg. alternating. Yeah. Yeah. So if, okay. the, if you're walking, it's total reps. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't sure if the, the programs were written with a specific in mind or if it was just depending on my goal or if it was lifters preference or gotcha or what. So, all okay. right, man, thanks for calling in. Yeah. It's been an honor and a pleasure. Thanks for answering my question today. And, uh, I think we could definitely use a little bit more in the world of what you gentlemen have to offer. So my wife and I both enjoy your programs and your podcast. So thank oh, you very much for what you do. Appreciate awesome. it. Thank you very Thanks, much, Chris. Thank you. thank you. Thank you. You got it. Yeah. That's the question because, uh, I get stuck in this. Well, it's great, like, great questions just ahead of himself. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's, uh, it, it, the stuff, both of you were going in the direction. I think I was, we all were going to go. Yeah. And if he can't answer that yet, then we can't really answer that because right. all the programs, I, mean, I guess it's a good time to address this, right? We, we phase all the programs. And so you technically could run a program back to back yep. mm -hmm. and be okay. But you just have to be aware of what program you're running and what things that we it may be lacking. Mm -hmm. And you know, a, a program like Powerlift, incredible for getting really strong at a couple lifts, but mm -hmm. really lacks uh, different planes. It lacks unilateral work. It yep. lacks mm -hmm. anti rotation stuff. I mean, there's a lot of things that it lacks for general health. And depending on your goal, um, it, it's probably uh, you know advantageous for you to move through different programs unless you have a very specific goal. Well, that's the thing. If you have a specific goal, you know nothing's going to be better than working on that continuously. But have to check yourself on uh, whether or not your body's responding the way it should, and that's where you would tend to have to go into a different type of uh, adaptation to kind of fill that need. Our next caller is Carol from Rhode Island. Carol, what's happening? How can we help you? Hey, how are you? Good. Um, thank you so much for having me on. I've been listening to your podcast for probably seven years now, six or seven years, and um, it's an honor to be here today. Um, so essentially, my question is about how to adjust my training to a gym that doesn't have any squat racks um, or barbells or platforms for deadlifting um, during the first year or two of surgical uh, residency um, and still maintain my squatting and deadlifting skills. Um, so for a bit more context, um, I've been lifting pretty consistently for six years now, um, and I'm starting my surgical uh, training residency in the next month. Um, and I've noticed that, you know, in the times I was least consistent with my training is when um, when it wasn't convenient to go to the gym. Um, so my current gym is about 15 to 20 minutes away from where I live. Um, and there's one that's about two blocks away that I'm going to start going to because I need something that's really convenient, easy. Um, but this gym does not have barbells. They do not have uh, squat racks or platforms or anything. Um, so how do I adjust my training to this new gym and still maintain those skills. Yeah. Good is question. This a curves by chance? No, it's no, a planet it's fitness. Probably planet fitness. Yeah. Is it planet it fitness? Is. <laughs> yeah, planet. Not hey, my first choice planet. gym, but you know, <laughs> she's all embarrassed to yeah. say, it. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> hey <laughs> just don't lunk. Yeah, yeah, and, and don't by the way, you know, you, what you're doing right now is just hard. I've trained a lot of surgeons and the residencies are just brutal. So I know kind yeah. of what, what that's all about. Look, here's the deal. And this is for, I, I tell this to people all the time, don't make good the or per perfect the enemy of good, okay? Mm -hmm. So perfect is you got a gym, it's got all the equipment you want, you got all the time in the world, you could do the best workouts. But because you can't do perfect, don't demonize the what you have available to you. So because you have something close by, it doesn't have the, all the equipment you want, that's totally fine because at least you're going to be consistent. So how do we make up the difference or how do we modify our workouts? Lots of unilateral work. I mean, you could do single leg deadlifts with dumbbells, and there's a nice carryover from that to a traditional deadlift. You could do single leg squatting, split stance exercises Bulgarian, like Bulgarian yeah. split stance squats, and 
you know, walking lunges that are really, really good. Um, that'll give you some great results. Um, I mean, to so, keep it keep it simple. That's you said, yeah. just right there. I, the two main things that you can't do now is deadlift and barbell squat. Those are the two right. main things you won't be able to do in the gym. Instead, it, anywhere in our program where it says for you to deadlift, I would do single leg dumbbell deadlifts. That's what I would do, and just I think those are incredible. By the way, too, I think I don't think you're they're great you know, for everybody. Yeah, you're not going to lose much there, especially if you can actually get really strong there. Anywhere that says barbell back squat, do Bulgarian split stance squats. So with dumbbells. Yep. Like that. Like literally, that's uh, that. Those two and those two movements are so phenomenal mm -hmm. that you're you're not going to lose a ton. As much as I know, we preach about you know barbell back squatting deadlifting because they are the king of exercises those two movements there's are a lot incredible. of strength coaches out there that argue unilateral is superior that's right so it's 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 one of those things where um you know you think you're going to be losing out on on all these gains but honestly you're probably going to be filling a need for your body that uh you're going to be able to address nicely with just focusing on unilateral work for quite a while yeah totally i mean you you may find yourself after a couple of years. how long is your residency how much longer do you have by the way um it's six years long the first two years are going to be um, pretty intense in terms of like hours and like I won't get that many days off um, in a month, but after the first two years, it should be more um, consistent in terms of mm -hmm. like hopefully getting two days off in a row or something like that. Gotcha. Okay. So remember this too, Carol, that, you know, exercise and, and resistance training also, it's a phenomenal tool that improve that you can use to improve the quality of your life, but you have to consider the context of your life. And if you're working your butt off and you're not getting tons of sleep and there's lots of stress, use the workouts to improve the quality of your life. Try don't what you don't want to do is try and make your workouts perfect and intense and counter kind of what's going on in life because you'll burn yourself out. And I know that that's a tendency with people like you. You're obviously a high performer. You're in a, a position where it requires supreme discipline and, and hard work and you can overdo it. And I bet you, I would make a bet that you have a tendency to overdo things, um, than, than the opposite. So you're, you're in a, you're in a fine position, you know, dumbbell work is perfect. You have machines too. Planet Fitness has got things like a hash squat and a, and a leg press. Those are fine too. You could throw those in as well. And then when you get the opportunity to go back to barbell work, it's gonna be real fun to get back into it. But um, you're not, you, you, yes, it's not perfect, but in your situation, that's exactly how I train you. I wouldn't tell you go sign up and maximize and, your environment. Yeah. I wouldn't say go drive 20 minutes to that gym. Cause yeah. I know that you're probably not going to be as consistent as you said. So that's not ideal. That trumps it for sure. Totally. Cool. So I guess like one small follow-up question is, um, you know, I do see myself like being able to go to my other gym like once a month. Um, so how do I, Ooh, like, that's when you five by five. Yeah. Yeah. I would go, well, I would and go that's to when you, that's when you strength. Yeah. That's when you get, I mean, that's actually awesome because you know what you get to do is do the, what we're advising with the Bulgarian split squats and the single leg deadlifts. And then when you get to get to go to the gym, go test the barbell, do all the barbell stuff. Yeah. I would do like, I would do squats, you know, I would do, you know, all the barbell stuff and practice them when you're there once a month. I, that'll be really fun. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. You got it. No problem. Thanks for calling in. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, boy, I wish I learned that lesson early that like, don't make perfect the enemy of good. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, I don't want to do it if it can't be perfect. Well, now yeah. you're missing out. Cause then it's like all or nothing too. It's yeah. like if you feel like you're not putting up, you know, what you could be putting. And so it's almost like a deterrent to your motivation. Well, totally. I mean, and people think because we, we are, we're constantly talking about how important the barbell back squat and deadlift is because they are the king of all movements in the gym. But it doesn't mean that I wouldn't, as a trainer, would not consider the other factors here. And you hit it, Sal, right on the head with the, she said that she, you know, has found herself having a hard time driving 15 to 20 minutes to the gym. So this gym is right around the corner from herself. Yep. It's way more convenient. She's more likely mm -hmm. to show up. Uh, she's far better off going to a gym that she's more likely to show up to three times a week, mm -hmm. every week, than go to make her go to another gym that's 15, 20 minutes away that has a barbell that she's going to show up to once a month. Yep. Like it just mm -hmm. Frequency is king. Yeah, no, absolutely. Our next caller is Marlene from Germany. Hey, Marlene, how can we help you? Hey, guys. Uh, thanks so much for taking my question. Uh, really excited to be here. Been listening for you for about two years now, I think. And I really love your show. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, back to my question. So basically, I've been dealing with imbalances, not really regarding my uh, muscle strength or size, but more regarding mind-muscle connection. 
So when I do exercises, I feel them way more on the right hand side of my body than I do on the left, even though I'm a lefty. Um, and my question would be, uh, what would your guys' approach be to combat this kind of mind muscle connection imbalance or whatever you would call it? Yeah, oh, boy. this is like a layup for us, right? Boy, now. Do we <laughs> this have is why we wrote symmetry. Weird. I wonder if we have a program though. For <laughs> we this. got the program. Uh, so for yeah, you. I've actually started symmetry about two weeks ago. Oh. Uh, I think I'm a bit impatient, so not that much change there. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think I just have to get through a program, but actually maybe you have some more tips or what I could be working on as well. No, well, there's, nothing's going to work faster than that. Then, then really focusing on one side at a time and concentrating yeah. on that area. So you're in, you're mm -hmm. in two weeks in, you're, you're doing the isometric portion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. No, you're, you're going to, yeah. so go through the program and then you can go through it again. Well, I, and, and I have a tip for you is you have to be patient with this. Mm -hmm. This of like, I mean, you have to be patient with everything when it comes to fitness, when it comes to building muscle, when it comes to burning fat. But when you're talking about imbalances and trying to correct, you know, uh, poor recruitment patterns that you've probably had for most of your life, mm -hmm. uh, it's even more tedious and even more important that you're patient. That's that's the unfortunate part about yeah. something like this. It's just going to take. And so there, okay, the moves that you find, okay, that you're going through right now in symmetry that you find help you the most or in the most problematic areas, do not be afraid to do the isometric stuff throughout the day and practice it. Oh, okay. So it, you just because we have it pro like we have it programmed for you to at least do it that much, but you can do more of that. So more of the isometric stuff to help with the imbalances that is okay for you to do. Yeah, because it's really not that damaging. So, and, and it's very similar to our approach to priming your body and getting it ready for the workouts as well. And that's why, you know, it is sort of in the very beginning is to address a lot of those imbalances and in, in the recruitment side of it to, to be able to get you more stable. Uh, but yeah, it's really repetitions that's going to be key for this. And the unilateral training part is really going to be where it's going to reveal itself to you. Yeah, but ultimately it's going to take a little time. So yep. I, I follow symmetry. And you know what? It's one of those programs you could follow over and over again because it's extremely balanced. So keep following that program, and probably within two to two to three month period, you should notice uh, some pretty some pretty significant changes. Marlene, have you uh, have you gone through the Prime Pro webinar that I did? Oh yeah, I actually did. Yeah, and I also have Prime Pro um, and the other one. Uh, so yeah, 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 I know all these moves. <laughs> so when you went through when you went through the Prime Pro webinar, did you notice a discrepancy from your left to your right, like 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 in movements, like the ninety ninety, where was one side way more mobile and flexible, and you were better connected to than the other side? Did you notice that? No, actually, it was not that profound. So it's really only if I do strength exercises um, and. For example, if I follow MAPS Anabolic and then I'm in the third phase where I really focus on the squeeze and the pump, that's where I notice it. So oh. this is where it's really profound. This is a, this is a force production thing. Yeah, no, yeah. Symmetry, you you got the perfect program. Yeah. I would stick with that All until right. you really felt Trust it balance the process. out. Yeah, you got to you gotta go through it and maybe multiple times It would be probably best. All right. That sounds great. Thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you for calling from all the way from Germany, by the yeah. way. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. thanks. That's rad. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah, you know, you hit the nail on the head, Adam. Uh, I mean, if you're right-handed, like, how long would it take for you to feel like your left hand was as comfortable as your right? Yeah. It took a long. It could take a long time to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 a patient thing, you know, for sure. And the only thing that you can really do to speed that up is to increase the frequency of how often you're practicing with yeah. your other hand. I mean, uh, I I felt like I made pretty fast progress with my ankle mobility and my hip mobility in comparison to what I hear other people. About, but I also know that you were doing it all day. Yeah, three days, three times a day minimum. It just mm -hmm. I, it became a thing where every time I thought about it, I would just get down and kind of practice it, and it just became this ritual that I was doing all day throughout the day, and that's what accelerated me being able to catch it back up. Had I treated it like just a workout and I was doing it once or twice a week, one time, that's it. I don't know how long it would have taken me to get to where. Yeah, I'm you're at. going against decades of hardwired right. patterns, so right. it's you got to always put it in perspective. You know, it's going to take a while yeah. sometimes. Look, if you like our show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at mindpumpjustin. Adam is on Instagram at mindpumpadam. And you can only find me on Twitter at mindpumpsal.